Inshallah, brothers and sisters, Inshallah, um, he's back for now, maybe, probably not for long, these will probably be the last two videos that we ever see from him, but we'll have a look, why not, um, he's, sim he's still a Muslim, and apparently now he's a member of the ACLU, and, uh, or was he up? No, it was the NAACP that he was a member of. Now he's a member of the ACLU. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's have a look. Oh no! <laughs> Just when you think that you're out. So, what's up, docs in the ACLU? Robin was sent to the perjury in the 60th District Court. She lied in the courtroom. I can't hear it. She said that all her daughters had brown hair and sometimes dyed their hair other colors. That was a lie. Her old perjury in the 60th Sorry. District Court. She lied in the courtroom and said that all her... Oh, uh, he's, he's speaking quietly because of his mom. Look, look at his writing. That's how I write. It's like childish, childish writing. Her daughters had brown hair and sometimes dyed their hair other colors. That was a lie. Her oldest daughter, Jane. We need to boost. This needs like a boost. I'm gonna boost the sound. But then I'm gonna be so loud. <sighs> Let's just pretend you can hear. We'll turn the subtitles on for extra hilarity. Amy Bastuka that lived at that lived on Lauren Drive. She had natural red hair. That was the girl I sent the flowers to. She has a sister named Samantha Pastuka that has natural red hair. Then there's a daughter named Michaela Pastuka that has natural. I think that's Michaela, not Caleb. Blonde hair. Young, that's the youngest daughter. Robin Pastuka also lied in the court and said that I was on her property. I was never on her property. I sent Jamie Pastuka flowers through a floral company. And the floral <laughs> company delivered them to the front door to Joe Pastuka. Um. <laughs> Hold on, I've got to turn me down. I'm loud. I can tell. Uh, this is insane. Okay. It's been like a year. Alright, since his last stupid video. Which was a year before the videos before that. And he's still talking about... Something Pastuka, all this. How old is he now? 37? 38? They fabricated a story and said that I tried to pull Amanda Cherry out of a car, and that never <laughs> happened. Amanda no. Cherry never lived at the Pastuka residence on Lauren Drive, uh. and Amanda Cherry lived in Roosevelt Park. So I never knew who Amanda Cherry was until. Essentially, Jamil, the problem you've had though. Is that you shouldn't be stalking these women. That's the issue. That's the problem. You, you should be having a job. You should have a job somewhere. That's what you should be doing. You should be working. In fact, to sum up all of his problems the last, like, ten years. You wouldn't have had time for all this mad bullshit. If you'd have been doing something productive. Or just not productive, but not this. I had seen uh, the police report and I saw it for the first time at my trial in the newspaper, which says convicted stalker talks about gang stalker paranoia. The, in the newspaper, the prosecutor <laughs> in the newspaper. The, the newspaper? The newspaper? Just search Jamil Rawls. <laughs> talks about paranoia. 
is Timothy Mack. That doesn't make sense because at my trial, the prosecutor was Benjamin Meade. Ugh. Tim oh, yeah, because, all right, so that doesn't make sense. The media, a newspaper, a local news outlet got something wrong. They also called me your stalker. <laughs> Although they corrected that when I complained. <laughs> But, you know, that's because, I don't know, maybe because I'm part of the program, because I work for the FBI. Timothy Matt isn't a 60th District Court prosecutor, he's a Circuit Court prosecutor. So they confused the public in my newspaper article. Then they said that Jamil was on a younger girl's, younger neighbor girl's lawn. And that doesn't make sense because in the police report, the woman was 29 years old, Amanda Cherry. And I sent, and I never sent flowers to a man in a chair. I sent flowers to a twenty-one-year-old woman. I was to a man in a chair. <laughs> oh, we've got to turn this off. I can't read and listen. So they lied again and again and again and again. And I'm a Muslim now. My name is Jamil Muhammad. <laughs> I'm a Muslim now. My name is Jamil Muhammad or Ali. Ali, formerly Jamil Rawls, and I'm trying to set the record straight on some of the injustices that happened. And Raymond Judge J Raymond J Castrava's court Judge Raymond J Castrava's court, and set the record straight, dude. Google your name, okay? Go not only Google your name, Google your name, then press videos, and turn filters off. All right, no, your YouTube videos don't even come up anymore because of you know the degeneracy of the internet. I'll put it that way. I believe because Rob Mastuka is a Freemason. It was a Freemasonic trial. I didn't see him at the lodge. Robert Mastuka, my lawyer, Jeffrey T. Court, you. and the, the detective, Detective Kyle Neer, they all did a Freemasonic stance and pose where they put their hand over their hand. And I, if I ever get the video footage of this trial, I'd be able to post it. Furthermore, going back to me trying to they lied and said I tried to pull the girl out of the car. Uh, there was a timeline thing where the reason why I think they said that is because I was talking about pulling the man out of the car on YouTube. You yeah, know, shit. The leaders supposedly called Silent Observer. No, this. No. No. I, I called the police. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't call Silent Observer. I don't know what Silent Observer is. I don't know what any of that is. I've told you a million times. Yeah, and you said supposedly. The obsolete is supposedly. You were the one who started saying I called Silent Observer. I... I called the police. I straight up emailed the Muskegon um, County Sheriff's Department. Uh, I sent them all the shit. All the fucking videos with timestamps. Of you threatening this girl, people she was going about uh, around, and just slow descent all the time into madness. And I said to them, "Not that it matters, because I'm not an authority, so they don't they won't listen to me." But that you needed psychological fucking help, not prison. But you know, I should have fucking contacted the hospital. And they but they had to contact the place. Pulled the girl out of the car. So, but that happened after I sent the flowers. So it's either I tried to pull the girl out of the car then sent the flowers, or sent the flowers then tried to pull the girl out of the car. So the timeline doesn't make any sense. Thank you. Thank you. Um. So that was one video. Hey, this one, Donna and Jamil. This is just, and this is why I've got, this whole thing here is why I've got no faith that he'll be back after this. This was posted 28th of April, so it was over a week ago. Playing. Hmm. Go on. There's no, uh... Second. Oh, there we go. Hello? Hello? Hey. 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 How are you? Okay. Pretty good. Now, I'm going to leave. 
I'm going to step outside so I can talk, so um, give me one second, all right? Uh Uh-huh. You can eat your meal, Mom, in the background. I'm using the phone. I'm going to step outside to you. How's his brother? Okay, you there? Yeah. Okay, so what, now, right recently we were going over um, gang stalking and all the stuff that comes along with gang stalking, and you've been a target for a long time. You got framed just like I got framed. What are your first thoughts about it? Uh, I learned that you have to carry a little GoPro or, um... Oh, my God. You know something? I already know every single person about the, uh, every single thing about this person. Just by the voice and that. Uh, you know... Yeah, you have to carry a camera. If you don't have a witness. She thinks so um, much of herself. So you have to have one or the other. You have to go out with a witness or you have to have a GoPro. And you have to keep a diary. You have to. Either a language. You have to this. You have to that. This is a bossy woman. And the gang stalking delusion from her probably comes from some narcissism. And inability to like cooperate or function around other people because of it. Or at least people who won't be subservient to it. Like Candy Grand Prix. Um, cause mm-hmm. all these things add up. You have to follow through on police reports. Um, you get the call log. Somebody called a cop, uh, or you found out that it's uh, related, then you want to get the call log, date, time, and location, and get that call log. I think I did listen to this already, but I don't remember any of this. I remember the first one, and this one is just a blur. And then um, any other police information you can get uh, as well. Uh, it all pans out. Mhm. Mhm. See, I was I was set up and framed after I went through a lot of gang stalking. It all started in the summer of 2015, and it could have been going on before that. It was just so light I didn't notice it. Um, but it started in the summer of 2015. I had summer just of up... remember that, guys. Does anybody else remember the summer of 2015? Ah, oh. yes. So I'm just having like a flashback. It's all the good memories. I had recently been set up to be killed in Hollywood, California. <laughs> I had did some interviews with Jordan Maxwell. Diamond. And after I did my interviews with Jordan Maxwell, I got set up to be killed at Motel 6 on Hollywood Boulevard. And I came back home after... I nearly got you, Jamil. The bullet shaved past your head. After that happened, it was at a motel. If he hadn't have walked behind that miniature hotel fridge at that exact moment, I'd have took the shot. At night, this occurred. And I got out of it. I came back home. And then after I came back home, I started talking about my encounter with Jordan Maxwell. I started talking about how he was a scam artist and all that stuff, and I started... Which is true, again. I've said it ab nauseum now, but yeah. That dude straight up tried to fucking scam Jamil. And he's a massive scam artist. And it's hilarious. I love, my favourite thing in the world about Jordan Maxwell is that, apparently, and who knows whether this is true, Jordan's such a bullshit, but uh, Manly P. Hall, 33 Degree Mason, entrusted in his entire priceless collection of books and you know freemasonic literature uh, some of it originals and the only ones in existence to jordan who then kept it in an old damp warehouse in la and which caught on fire and uh, everything burned <laughs> that sums up jordan maxwell our time behind i said to be killed and i didn't notice the things that were going on right away around me but all my neighbors started acting funny. 
They started acting really funny, mm-hmm. and it was like they were all watching me, and I did, but I did. I was left out. It's like they all knew something that I didn't know, and <laughs> I had never seen anything hey, like got- that. N-word, I know something that you don't know. I had a call from Rob, and you want me to clue her in? I can't because I already. Oh, okay. Robin, we're good. good. It's okay. okay. We're good. Okay. So go ahead. But... Go ahead. Whatever happened to Steve? Do you know what I mean? Where Where are the guys he used to talk to? She's got this haram, harem, harem, of um, these women. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, I um, I started noticing all the neighbors acting strange and acting funny, and. Lo and behold, uh, the the cars that were coming into the neighborhood, they didn't have their headlights on right away. They were coming in the neighborhood, and they were creeping. They'd be creeping like it was almost a hit, like somebody was trying to kill me again. And I literally thought somebody was trying to kill me. Um, all the neighbors in the neighborhood were involved with it, but they weren't invo- They weren't the ones that I thought were trying to hurt me. I thought all these mysterious cars that were coming into the neighborhood, circling the neighborhood, were the ones trying to do it. And... I was being gang stalked, and they were mimicking the hit that happened on me. They were like mimicking to me right. what had ha- right. what had happened, and for nothing those happened. Don't know, mimic- there was no hit. It, it's a mirroring effect. They mm-hmm. it's it's like Simon says, you do something and they reflect it back to you. Like if you go out and you wear a blue shirt, they might hire a few people to wear blue shirts to follow you around. They're mimicking you. That's what mimicking is. Okay, so anyhow, um. I was in my, I hid in my house for a month, and the woman that lived across the street from me, Robin Pastuka, she was the organizer of all this stuff. She was the main ringleader that was telling people what to do and telling the neighbors what to do, and I didn't know it at the time. At the time, I didn't know where this was coming from. I just knew it was happening. And so I hid in my mother's house for a month, and then when I came out of the house, then I started noticing the brightening tactics. The, the the cars with the headlights on and broad mm-hmm. daylight. I, I start noticing street theater. I start noticing all this stuff that comes <laughs> along with gang. So he locks himself in his house, and he goes even more insane <laughs> in isolation. <laughs> and he comes out, and he's noticing all these things. Oh no! Talking that I didn't notice before, and then I start seeing the police following me around too. So. It was it was a criminal conspiracy against me. Six foot five, like three hundred pounds, so insane at the time that like his eyes were facing opposite directions, and he's like laughing at himself in the streets, running around skipping. He had like a skipping rope that he was trying to lose weight with, and you know those like women's weights, like the the weights that you you know weights that you work out with, but they're like in plastic. Like pink plastic, he had a couple of them that he'd like, and they were just like little ones that he'd like walk up and down the street in his in his jorts and his like socks pulled right up. The guy looked unstable, <laughs> so people were looking at him weird. People were acting weird around him. So like, yep, uh, and I was a target, and I didn't know it. And then eventually, I came online and started doing courses with people and saying I was the only person in the world to be gangs talking. And I got we, we had courses, we had massages, we had massages, we had we had meetups and massages. I set up and I got framed. Um, one of the a woman that introduced herself to me in the summer of 2012. That was Robin Pastuka's daughter. Her name was uh, I believe she said her name was Jamie when she introduced introduced herself to me. Introduced herself to me. Introduced herself to me. They spoke once, and they became obsessed. And was sure that they were in love. Yourself to me, anyhow. Again, because of what he perceived that she thought. Anyhow, um, she was following me around, and so I ended up sending the girl flowers. And then after I sent the girl flowers, she started following me around even more. And then, when all the gang stalking was going on, no matter where I went, if I left the neighborhood, it was still going on. All different sorts of people were involved with it. But I made YouTube videos talking about I cared about her and all this stuff. And the police came over to my house, and they arrested me for stalking, a misdemeanor stalking. But when they arrested me, they said that I tried to pull a woman out of a car, 
named Amanda Cherry. And I I was like, wait a minute, I don't know that woman. You know what I mean? And she was 29 years old, and she lived uh, she she lived in Roosevelt Park, but she ended up in the police report. And so I went to a two day trial, and I was being gang stalked the whole time at my trial. How many times do you think Donna's heard this? I was being. Didn't he ask her like how her gang stalking started? <laughs> Seven minutes of his crap. And gang stalked even after my trial. And so leading up to the summer of 2019, the people stopped following me. The family stopped following me around. I stopped being gang stalked. And the gang stalking ended completely now. Now I don't get gang stalked anymore. But Because you left the internet. And you stop getting stressed out and you're just like, I don't know what. But to be honest, I'm, I'm speaking out of time. Turn. I don't know what you've been doing for like two years. That's that's basically. It sounds like just the same stuff, just exactly the same, but off screen. You've learned nothing. You've not been on your meds. And sound like you're doing anything with your days. Basically, in a nutshell, what I went through, but it was horrifying though. It was terrible. It was it was it was it was more horrible than I can describe. By me just explaining it like that. It's real easy. It's real quick. It sounds fun. It sounds simple, but it, it, it to have to be gang stalked like I was. It was terrifying. My food was drugged on several <laughs> occasions. <laughs> when he freaked out in Wendy's or Burger King or whatever. I think it was a McDonald's, was Nick? He liked Burger King, and he started hallucinating, <laughs> claiming that they were trying to kill him. <laughs> I, I was. Mm-hmm. I had all of that. Yeah. Oh, we got to add him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That first of all, I'd have put the phone down when she went. Mm-hmm. So dismissive. Well, also I'd say. Yeah, mm-hmm. covert drugging. Covert drugging happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cars, yeah. Cars yeah. Coming yeah. 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 Like I had all that. Mm-hmm. And they were turned away at the last minute. Um, just go, just going through a humiliating trial, you know, and and going to jail right. for a year. And all that stuff, I mean, that was pretty bad. But one, I had to go... one lies and the others swear to it. Yeah. Yep. That's their game. That's their game. Yeah. Yep. But I've yep. had that happen multiple times in little and big scenarios, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. All the way up. All of it. I've had all of it. I've had more extensive. I am what you call uh, revenge stalking, which means somebody... Pay, paid some money in the pool, and then from then maybe more oh, people yeah. paid money. But that's the best contracts. How many of them come up. up? And I've been under top, total annihilation because I've been hit ten times by speeding cars. It's not normal. <laughs> right. You know, bitch, stay out the road. The whole thing is not normal. Um, <laughs> ten but times. I get now, My and God. I've been through it all. And you got to have no fear to these people. You can't be fearful at all. Um, you have to stand right up. You can't be fearful. Feet. You should be fearful. Especially of cars. Maybe that's why you keep getting hit. I'm all the way because it is war. And it's war to take you down. And it's war to kill you. And mm. if they can't kill you, they'll set you up for jail. They'll play you all the way. That's what they do. Mm-hmm. That's what they Absolutely. do with me. And- yep. And I went, I went, I had never been in a mental institution in my life. And, <laughs> and I ended up, I ended up getting angry and I took off walking. And I walked for 37 miles. Walked 37 miles. <laughs> I said it first. And I got the number right for once. And the police stopped me. And they, the police stopped me and they wanted me to come with them. I didn't want to come with them. So they called an ambulance on me. This was in the middle of winter. Mm-hmm. And I ended up back at the house. Whoa, you missed out the part about the the men who materialized out of the snow. And it was crazy, y'all. Hospital in Muskegon. This I, this was in Hudsonville that they picked me up. I ended up at the hospital. And they brought me back to the hospital in Muskegon, and they involuntarily committed me with my mother's signature. And my mother, she didn't know what was really going on, but I think no. she did. I think she I think she did know I was being gang stalked. You know, she can't be she can't be stupid. 
You know what I mean? She knew something was going on. Couldn't, can't she? Because why, why all this trouble that was going on in the neighborhood with me and me making YouTube videos and me going to jail, she had to know something was happening, you know, unless she's completely blind. But uh, Well, it's anyhow. questionable because people don't know, you know, they don't know what's going on. And I'm right. still going through it. And, you know, um, the best thing to do is isolate yourself from other people and include your own family. I hate to say that. Because um, they just use the people around you, and it's very demonic as well. It is, it is spiritual as well. And they use the people around you to get to you. That's why they get people to befriend you, because they can do more damage when they're on the inside rather than the outside. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. They get a lot more done. They can make accusations, claim that they saw and heard things. I mean, that's the name of the game. Okay, so I've been through it all multiple times. So I really get this. I get it strong. I mean, I could tell you stuff you can't even imagine what I've been through. So, you uh, are. Yeah, that's. Bitch, you've been sodomized in the hospital? I don't think she knows who she's talking to. She remembers beat gang stalking. The name of the game. So isolation is best. You wonder why people go out to the woods with this? Isolation is best. They're better off. They're better off out sleeping in their car, you know, doing everything alone because then they don't have no witnesses and no gameplay. Uh, when you distance yourself from people and you carry a camera or you got a witness that you can trust, then you're good. Trust me, that mm. you're better off that way than you are uh, with, believe it or not, your own family members. I've had my own family members set me up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, and they I, even admitted to... to me the cops took them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I was being gang stalked in the psychiatric unit. They sure. had covertly drug my. They sure. had covert, They put. They, they were putting drugs in my IV. They covertly drugged me. Yeah, that's like, obviously. Drug my food when I had. When I yeah, had I had that dinner. happen. Yeah, and yeah. Um, they sent me uh, with the court. They sent me to a psych eval uh, through the court, and when I went through the court to the psych eval, I told her straight up what was going on and she told me uh yeah you you know you got stress you know you have stress but Mm -hmm. you know there there was no diagnosis no nothing and she turned around and said to me i don't know how you sleep at night if it were me i wouldn't be able to sleep at night because i imagine that i told her straight up what was going on yeah and right. then when I found arson was connected to the other charge, I knew that they, you know, that's when I sent out letters to the, to the judge, to the lawyer, to the psyche eval lady, yeah, you know, the, um, and the state attorney's office. I sent letters out to all of them and went back to the court and said, you mean to tell me that none of you people looked at the police report and saw arson on here? You gonna tell me that nobody looked at the police report? And they had the um, they had the uh, cop there, you know, the security cop. Talk he got about. up and stood in front of me like I was gonna do something. I told him, I said, you need to sit down. Give me a break. What am I gonna do? Run somebody over my walker? <laughs> it's pathetic. Mhm. Yeah, and that's how it goes. Yeah. They're talking about the courthouse is closed now, so I don't know how I'm going to appeal my case. I had an appeal in when I was still in jail. I put an appeal, After I lost my trial, I put an appeal in on the record. Mm-hmm. And it's been hard trying to find a lawyer to go back to, mm-hmm. to, go back to court on appeal. Um, I mm-hmm. contacted the ACLU. I contacted the Department of Justice. You know, and I'm just hoping I, I, Department I, of Justice. I have a glimmer of hope. They give justice. My name. You know, I've it's in the name. Liars. Um, explaining to people about what's happened to me by this wa- woman, Ron Pastuka. She's a Freemason. She proved herself to be a Freemason at my church. So, so are all judges. So why are you writing to judges and lawyers and you said yourself? Trial. Her, 
that Detective Kyle Neer and my lawyer, Jeffrey T. Courts, they all did a Freemasonic pose at the same time during my trial. At this, You know how that's how the world's run. And it's their laws. And their law, their legal system, their, leg- their, uh, their jurisdiction. So why would you try to fight it, dummy? Stupid dummy. Stupid, stupid, still six years later, dummy hasn't learned anything. Literally the exact same, exactly the same men- mental state that you were in six years ago. Talking about the same stuff. I thought you were supposed to be a Muslim now. Give us some fucking lectures on the Quran. Do something. So these rubbish interviews. At the same time, they all stood up and did it in front of the judge. And as far as I'm concerned, that's what this is all about, is Freemasonry. Because it wasn't until I started talking bad about Freemasons that um, I started getting gang stalked. And I don't think this is coming from Jordan Maxwell. I don't think it has anything to do with him. Because he can't even win his own case. He has He has a small claims court case for his website, and he can't even get his own website back, so it can't be somebody like him, because he wouldn't have the ability to affect me way over here. He can't even handle his stuff where he's at. You know? And so, mm-hmm. I, think it's, I think it's, but I do think it's Freemasons that are the ones behind it. And yeah. it's the ones in Muskegon that have been doing it to me. And so, you know, I lost, I lost a lot behind all this. And, we stalking you know, the Freemasons in Muskegon, um, Michigan. You know, I, I, don't, I don't bother action. trying to clear my name. I don't bother to try to clear my name. I don't even bother. Um, it doesn't matter what they I, put in writing. It doesn't I, matter what the, all their games. Um, I I got a judge who took early retirement with less pay. I have uh, two cops, uh, well, a cop and a first responder were um, fired. I have another cop that got fired for filing a false report on me. Um, some got away with it. Some did not. Uh, Nunez, she got out of here. And so, you know, what? what's the point? I don't care what they put in writing. I don't care what they got. It doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? What, what gets me is they didn't get to accomplish what they wanted to. You understand? They didn't get what they wanted. Now, I'm all busted up, don't get me wrong, but I'm still here. And because I'm still here, I watch my, I watch my back. That's how that mm-hmm. works. What they put in writing, I don't give a crap. They got all kinds of stuff in writing. They got, they got false background check distributed to all of my neighbors. What? You think, you think I'm going to go around and show these people the paperwork? They got this stuff knee high by now. It's been 25 years. I didn't know what was going on. But now that I know, I watch my back every step of the way, and they ain't going to do it again. And if they do it again, it ain't going to fall down the way they think it's going to fall down. Because I know how dangerous this game is. I know Jamil how, Rawls how is thinking the exact same thing I am right now. You understand what I'm telling How do I get off this phone call? In other words, if you think that you'd ever t- tell me... Okay, to oh, turn yeah, around so that tough. you're going to put handcuffs on me for something that I never did mm-hmm. ain't going to ever happen again. Do you understand what I just said? This is where Jamil's going to be I like, yeah. And the woman it ain't ever going to gonna happen again. Their game right. is the over. Woman... Over. And the woman she spits so much she shit. Yeah. Yeah, because I, 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 I had my camera out, you know, and everybody, oh, she's crazy. She's walking around with a camera. I don't give a crap what they think. These stupid-ass people don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. But let them try, let them try to pull me in the office again with their bullshit stories that I'm chasing somebody across the parking lot. Let them try that shit again. I told her, I said, you'll have a lawsuit so, so knee-deep, you'll never get out of it. Try it again. Mm-hmm. Try it again. Game is up. 
And that's the way you got to be. You know, they gave me a newspaper article, and in the newspaper article, all the facts are backwards. They're both absolute narcissists. They're just obsessed with themselves. Did you know me and me and I and I? One of the facts was they put Timothy Matt. They put Timothy Matt as a prosecutor in my newspaper article, and he wasn't even the prosecutor there. It was a prosecutor named Benjamin Miedema that was at my trial. This is so. It's like it's almost like satire of himself. They lied about that. Then they said I had put flowers in a younger girl's yard, but in the police report it was a 29 year old woman. The so the newspaper he gets, lied he about. Gets sued for that. Yeah, I could sue him. There That's she goes why. again. Look straight to the legal thing. Oh, you could you you could sue someone for that. Oh yes. That's why I need. That's why I need the ACLU and and the Department hmm. of Justice. I need these organizations to contact me back so I can follow up. Excuse me, I'm eating. Targeted individuals have no rights. You'll find that out. You have no rights. Mm-hmm. Your name's up at the uh, Pentagon, Homeland Security, and you'll have no rights. That's what this mm-hmm. shit's all about. Donna, my mother keeps calling me. I'm going to have to end the conference and call you right back. Okay. words we ever may hear. Those very well might be the last words we ever hear from Jamil Rawls. Sorry, the artist formerly known as Jamil Rawls. Now known as Jamil Muhammad Ali. Inshallah, brothers and sisters.